I was eight months old when he left in 1923 to come back to Canada. And I was 16 years old when I saw my father again. My father used to go down to the mercantile and order groceries. My mother saw the delivery boy coming and we couldn't talk English. And my mother says, you better go down there and see that everything is there. And I found a case of apples and four pounds of butter. I mean, butter was unheard of in, in our... <laughs> we used to take, in Italy, we used to take the uh, milk to the dairy to get the cheese. Anyway, I came upstairs and I says, Mom, we're so rich. I said, I found a case of apples and four pounds of butter. Everybody made a piece of something. It was an assembly line. They went from station to station to station. I never saw my back end of the jeans after they left. They, they left. The older girls were smarter and they would pick out all the small sizes and leave the big ones for the new girls. So of course, we couldn't go as fast because we had twice as much material to sew, you see, and that's what they did. But we all, we all got paid the same amount of money. <laughs> My brother's godmother, she says to Nellie, get smart. When they see the bundles going out, go and get one, whether you're finished your other one or not, and put it in your box, and nobody can take it away from you. So I got smart then. <laughs> they got contract for army uniforms. They really went through the stitches, stitch by stitch practically, to come up to their standards. Everything had to be just really specialized and, and well done. And of course, GWG had a, a reputation for doing things good, strong, well sewn. Some measure the war in casualties, some the price of coal or bread. I measure it in bundles sewn and letters from the man I wed. We all know someone over there, a husband, brother, son. We hope they get our uniforms, our stitches good and strong. We had to go to the RCMP and be fingerprinted because we were aliens. You know, Italy was in, in the war against England and the uh, Allies. Even my father, he had been a citizen for many years. Because of Mussolini, I'm enemy alien. And every month of this war, I report to a policeman. I tell him that I'm working hard, I'm grateful for my pay. I want to make a life here, and I hope they'll let me stay. I'm not asking much. I'm not asking the more. All I ask is a living wage for the work I do. just complain but this new army cloth has only added to our strain the fabric so unwieldy has forced our pace to slow we cannot even earn enough to cover room and board we got nothing at the end of the week and uh, so we decided that something had to be done about it you know, we were scared, no kidding. But we said, well, we can't live on this. I'm not asking much. I'm not asking.
the bell went and of course the humming of the machines started and that's when we stopped the switch. We knew where the switch was to stop the machines. Of course the hum just stopped. The examiners at the end there, you know, they all turned around like that and said, what's going on? They thought, some, of course, the mechanics came running, eh? And uh, so we said we wanted to talk because they were not listening to us. I write my soldier every week, Italian still what I know best. Friends at work who teach me English never mind. Except for those I laugh with, I'd quit this factory floor. There's jobs with higher pay, at least, until the men come home. I'm not asking much. I'm not asking the moon. All I ask is I. the work I do. 